they have no way of controlling the AM. I mean, the, the mid game spike from L minutes. Invoker, so. Prepare for battle. Lagging, perfect world. Hello. Yeah, sometimes that is a, a perfect world server issue if you have to kind of exit out, uh, close out of the game and then reconnect it and that might fix it. I've also had to sometimes even restart Dota 2 as a whole, which is annoying, but it is what it is. So uh, just going to go through some quick intro, uh, introductions while we get that settled. Garter is going to be running on the IO for C deck. He's going to be getting pulled two tangos so that he can go for the bottle rush and they're already breaking down the tree so they can go for a lot of better stacking play. But uh, the Observer War does see Garter for the moment. I don't think they have the range to actually uh, thwart to his endeavors, but but it is going to be interesting movement from Garter early to try to break down all these trees. They, they are going to also look for the top bounty rune, and Tide really can't contest that. So it should be a bounty rune going to IO and getting that bottle out immediately. Uh, there we go. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Are we good? We're good. We're good. Sweet. Awesome. The Didn't miss anything. Begins. Nope. Did not. Though Slark is going to be the one to pick up the bounty run up top. Down bottom is going to go to MMY on the line. I actually prefer to give it to the supports here, but maybe if Slark gets a little bit closer to six sooner, he can be even more aggressive. In either case, uh, he's going to be doing fine in this lane. He's got eight tangos, a stout shield, and a sav. Probably going for poor man's shield very early, and... What could a tide really do? Not too much in this situation, but no. Even still, it might disrupt a, a couple of last hits. The Slark is very base damage reliant. Actually, everybody on the team is really reliant on their base damage. Even the tiny gets a, a lot of damage from the. Actually, that's bonus damage is green, so maybe I'm uh, <laughs> completely wrong on that count. But he still gets big. He still has a good strength gain, and it will at least frustrate him. So. I think the Tide's going to be pretty strong once he gets to, to the level he wants to be, and he's going to be dual laning with Faith once again, so the Jakiro will give Tide just that much more breathing room, and probably oh. go for some ancient stacks as well. Oh god, there's the Chilling Touch, the Pounce in as well, and is he going to fall here? He wow. is! Wow, Chilling Touch damage is so strong, it's 50 yeah. extra damage on hit, ugh. Man, it really is. Down. Especially, like, against the Tide, who, like, doesn't ha even have his Kraken Shell yet. Like, he's taken so much damage. Three armor, 600 HP. Like, if the Anchor Smash doesn't connect, as he used it just to farm a creep, he's suddenly extremely vulnerable, and the, the well-timed, well-positioned pounds from XH will bring him down. And uh, this is why you see the, the Ancient Apparition get banned out a lot of the time. You know, just chilling touch level 1, <laughs> deceptively strong, and even killing a Tidehunter off too, even with Anchor Smash on him, didn't matter, but uh, that's uh, that's going to set in July back quite a bit, especially since he's dual laning with, inf with uh, Faith. So, I mean, they're, they're going to go for a pull here. This is stacked, but Q is there to stop him and just harass him out. If anything, but <laughs> Q went for the boost pickup too after that first blood, so he's gonna be just skirting around everywhere. He's gonna be so fast, and I don't think he'll die anytime soon, honestly. And look at this, Garter with the uh, the pull on the hard and the medium camp, and no mud golems either. Lucky pulls. Yeah. And triple stack coming out. This is the one thing, it separates really good wisps that are well practiced in private lobbies and those that are just kind of trying it out for the dozen, dozens of time. It is going from a double stack to a triple stack oh. on that medium because it's so it's such a small leash. But uh, he's able to pull it off, gets a triple there, and obviously the hard camp can be stacked a ton of times. So it's going to be really nice for maybe to be able to farm that up with his avatars or maybe a little spirit damage to help him out as well yeah the yao just actually got really lucky in the middle lane he, he got so lucky he had a forge spirit up because if he didn't he would have been tossed back into the uh, middle of the creep wave hmm. okay so oh tap pounce will come up top they're oh. gonna get some good damage here chilling touch striking against the tide and goodbye once more falling Ooh. wow and q gets the kill again this is a uh, this is shaping up to be a pretty good AA game for him i mean mm -hmm. If he wants to go for Arcanes, I don't think he will, but I mean, just try to get faster, Poi Booster. And he's feeling the five roll, though, so it's going to be kind of tough for him to guarantee at least the earlier Ag Scepter, but I've seen I've seen 18 minute Ag Scepters actually come out, so. Eh, maybe this I'm, is the I'm game. just really impressed with how the Slark is hitting these pounces. Like, he doesn't have boots, the Tide does, and he's able to connect with those pounces. Maybe a little bit of Orbit Venom Slow helps out a little bit, but in general, it's just Angel Eyes not. Uh, 
uh, juking and jiving like you would expect him to. Like he needs to outmaneuver this lark. He needs to at least make one pounce miss, and then he'll be overcommitted and taking a lot of return damage. But oh, and MMY. he gets another connect. But MMY's here. No, oh, the shilling touch is activated too. There's a sunstrike coming on in. That damage is going to be huge. Ice path comes in for faith to guarantee the kill, and now Q. He's like, oh crap, I've overextended, and he is just going to die. No problem here. Auto attacks, eat the tango. Maybe not gonna die. Maybe I'm wrong. No, there's Spike. Is. Oh, wait, no, oh, turn oh, around. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. oh, whoa. Q. oh he's alive. Oh, that is sad. And now that Garter's here, too. In July, getting body blocked just a bit by Garter. The ice path is gonna stop. Uh, Chang To. Chang To. And in July gets out. Okay. And the miscommunications. They thought they had enough damage there, but they didn't. That is that is very sad. They, their spikes does a lot more damage than he used to, but it's still not sufficient to bring down the ancient apparition there. And yeah, that's a, a pretty important kill. As he's gotten a couple himself. He's up to level three. Said he walks back to base and heals back to full. So MMY's rotation up top only gets them the one point on the board, and that was obviously for the takedown against the Slark. So he's gonna be still okay on the lane. And then Silo's doing even better. I mean, obviously, he's up to 30 CS, top of the net worth. But when you compare an anti-mage to a tiny that's farming away, it, it's it's hard to really see their potential power curves. Like, you see the aspect of tiny getting really big when the relocates start coming through and being very dangerous at that point in time, assuming the Wisp is experience, has experienced as, of course, Garter is. And, uh, of course, there's a potential farm rebounds with the aspect of all these stack camps available to him. It is kind of warded up by the Radiant side, so there is a good chance for him to contest the stacks, but as it stands right now, maybe he has a lot of potential pull just waiting for him, and oh, they're going to use the bottle to farm those out. Yeah, so this is... Let's just watch the massacre unfold. He's just going to be able to mow all these down. Once he has enough mana for the full combo, at least, he's got 170, so they were taking a little bit of damage just so they could overcharge and use the bottle. And actually, wow, they, they are really messing this up. It wasn't ideal, but um, it's also just one of those aspects where it is a level 2 avalanche, level 3 toss. Yeah. So you're going to have to go two well, ways. Well, actually, to maybe they're up. farming the skeletons. Maybe that's what they're doing. <laughs> Trying to let the, uh, the Dark Troll Summoners give them a little bit of extra gold. <laughs> I'm just being okay. So oh, oh, strike! Oh, oh, oh. I'm being insane. Obviously, the Observer Ward would have been the thing to set that up, but... Maybe. No, sir. Uh oh. MMY. Can he get in range? He's got Tranquil Boots. Yeah, he's just got the brown. Goodbye. Dyer's top tower. Ice Path, Earth Spike, and then it'll be the Anchor Smash from In July to pick it up. 333 is here, but he's not level 6. He's got Spin. Gonna be able to do a bunch of damage to In July. Jesus. That's just mowing him down. He's just ignoring everybody. He's definitely chopping. And now there is Shang Toe, but MMY survives. He's able to get out. Yao, maybe the same story for him. No, the Shadow Dance comes in. He drops the Sun Strike, but he's getting body blocked up there. Dark Pack and the Auto Attack pick up the kill, and. That's a two for one. Or two for two, excuse me, with Tiny dying as well. Yeah. It was one to two, now three to four, four, but the big thing here is they wanted to contest what was going on with this stack, and other than uh, that Sunstrike, which is really nice, they don't really get enough out of it. The, the return kills from the Juggernaut really clean things up in the end, so good rotation from him, even though that does leave Siler to completely free farm once more. The Battle Fury timing on Siler is going to be insane this game. Like, he's... Yeah. Got an 18 denies, 48, 49 last hits, and yeah, this is just his game to be able to build up as quickly as he wants to. Very quick ramp up for him. But even still, we do see that kind of power spike coming out from the Tiny as he's going to be jumping up now level 6 and uh, clearing out all those juicy stacks and getting a lot of gold for himself. So we see on the courier the treads come through, and that little bit of attack speed will give him a lot more necessary auto attacks to clean things up. Yeah, it's unfortunate that he, he loses the uh, the attacks he once he levels his ultimate, but, you know, he deals with it. There's a cold stop on mid. They're going to look for Q. Drop it a Hex, drop it a Spike, and that's a quick kill up there, especially with the help of the uh, Forge Spirits. Um, real quick, guys, if you cannot hear EGAD in Dota TV, retoggle the audio channel, just turn it to the Chinese casters or no broadcasters, and then turn it back to us. You should be able to hear them. It happens when people disconnect and reconnect from live games, but I, I'm, he was he was calling me on the mi open mic, so I'm sure he has it open. Yeah, I have mine open. That's good. Cool. Anyways, uh, Midas is going to be coming out for Yao here, already using it on the Hellbear Smasher, and we'll be building up a lot of experience here. You said you want to see the Exhort build? You've already seen some yeah. cool sound strikes coming out, and uh, yeah, he's going to be building up his Exhort in full very quickly. Probably go 4-1-4, four, four, and then max Exhort. 
Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, he's gonna have the meatball prep too. This is gonna be some nice setups. I mean, ravaging the meatball. Uh, the four spirits are just really tanky and hard to kill. Uh, Sunstrike. Also, I liked I like seeing them early on, and he's 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 one for one. I mean, he's uh, one for two so far from what I've seen. They're caught on camera at least, and it, it's working out well for him. He he was not getting pressured either by the tiny. He just kind of sat back and was like, "All right, I have extra damage. I can last hit better than you." And uh, he kind of he at least guaranteed himself some farm despite the tiny being ahead. But most of that is just from the jungle camps that he cleared out. And uh, the lanes are all sorts of janky right now. And Siler's being left alone to just do his own thing. Farm up down pot. He's, it's kind of like he's just listening to music. Like, I'm just going to PBA, guys. Enjoy your 4 versus 5 for 25 minutes while I farm up Manta and uh, mm. Battle Fury. Yep, and they're putting pressure out on the, the other lanes well enough. LGD are going to be able to find their level 6 for the Tide. But he doesn't use it to get Ravage. He uses it to get more Anchor Smash to, and uh, Kraken Shell to finish off these Ancients. And although that will be accomplished here nicely, because it's half experience to him, he's not going to have Ravage immediately after f finishing it's this, mind despite game. being level 6. It's 100% the mind game that he's going to present. Once he shows himself at level 6, he'll be like, oh crap, he's got Ravage. Okay, let's, oh, let's yeah. not overextend. <laughs> You would definitely take that to be a given here, but he's going to have to farm up a, a couple more camps in order to actually have it more than just a threat. Either way, that does give openings for maybe big relocate plays, very aggressive stance from oh. the side of Sunstrike finger? Boom! Oh, God! Nice. Poor AA. Just gets melted down. Some MOI can do on this line, just getting the early Tranquils, Magic Stick, and TP scroll up, it's his bread and butter. It's all he really needs, and from there he can make those initiations happen. So, Mana Drain will be have to go up on creeps every once in a while, but otherwise, yeah, he's got plenty to work with here just for... <sighs> standard plays, but we do see the smoke come... Or actually, not even smoked, they... Just gonna just, go in, run through, and the Observer Ward does see them. No, oh, toss it in the Omni though. He's gonna spin to win all over Yao's face. He does not have uh, Ghost Walk invoked right now, so let's see if he can survive. Nope, Omni Slash comes in and that's just a swift kill. Yeah, so good aggressive movement. The Observer Ward, not on the bottom rune, is on the river, and that is gonna cost them the Invoker's life here. But they'll just kinda go group up here. I've, I mean, although it is frustrating to lose your mid and maybe even some damage on your tier one tower, it means that five people mid means there's nobody bottom to disrupt Siler, and he literally is just giving a free game. <laughs> this is this is gonna be catastrophic for C deck. I don't know what they're gonna need to deal with him. Honestly. Their BKBs aren't going to come out anywhere near as fast as his his two main items, but all right, let's see. Avalanche misses. They try, but <laughs> it's a valiant effort, I guess, with just that. But uh, this is just awkward. And he might even get a kill here if they go in with the Ravage play and they stay smoke? overstay yeah. the welcome. Maybe still down here, going to actually be caught out. Yeah, they have all the stuns they need to make this a kill as long as they disable the Garter's relocate. Yeah, they want to get the Hex out of Garter first. Yep. Spike and then in, and Garter Hex. There it is. Boom. And Siler gets another a freebie. This is just... Jesus. Siler is having the game of his life. Like, they, he literally could, couldn't get a better game in a pub as far as just being given the free lane, getting a, a nice little kill there. And uh, honestly, they it's a, it's a conscious decision on their part not to contest him. TP comes on in from Faith. They throw oh, two wow. on in. Sunstrike comes through as well, but Faith actually TPs out. Yao is still alive, and they're going to look to focus on uh, Shang To. There's a Ravage coming in out to two. Connects in a maybe, and MMY would hit Hex, but they didn't want to commit any further than that. But taking a free kill on the Jug. Pretty easy goal for them. And the Blake Dagger was done by in July now, too, so even more threatening from uh, this side hunter. Yep, TD Rune is up on the Slark, could try something on Siler, but of course the Blink again breaks through Pounce even if they're leashed up, so twelve minute he can go in, he can get a couple right clicks in, but end of the day, it is a 12 minute Battle Fury, and uh, I want to see the stats on that, like, what, what, is the, what is the win percentage, and is this the fastest Battle Fury? I think this is the fastest Battle no. Fury I've seen in China right now. I mean, the big thing is he went Treads first, like he didn't just rush it out, like if you go Brown Boots, you can get a faster one, but as it is, this is... Uh, middle tower among the fastest times you can get with treads plus uh, the battle fury so 
There you go. And they've got a couple stacks waiting for him on the western side. And he's, of course, just going to stick to the lane as that's the easy farm. There's nothing to disrupt him here. And probably not for the rest of the game. Like, until they get an Abyssal on the Slark, which, you know, that we're talking 20 minutes from now at least, there is absolutely no way they bring him down unless he makes a mistake. Top tower is under attack. So, LG. This is not going to be good. They find the spike. Oh. And, ooh. Had they, had they not got that dark packed off, that would have been definitely a dead Slark. Finger was available too. Oh, top. Oh, oh no, I missed it. Oh, There's gonna easy. be a relocate play, and uh, that is gonna be a dead Jikiro. I mean, again, the big thing here is being able to blink away from the relocate game. The Invoker can't jump away very quickly. The Anti Mage can, so they'll always jump on the Jikiro or the Invoker when they can. Um, them being the more valuable kills. All right, so at least they're finding something. Maybe it's one, one, and one. It's, it's not as much as what the, what the AM is farming right now, but it's it's something to get him get him going a bit. Try to get his eggs online just a little bit earlier, and then start cleaving things down with the uh, the tree trunk. And they'll find it through one out of that kill too, which is pretty nice. Time to TP in as well as Faith, but they're too late to try to deny this tower. And whoa, soul ring pickup actually for Garner. Oh, and they're they're going to relocate. relocate this uh, time on MMY. Nice double earth spike, but it's not going to be enough damage onto Tiny. And MMY is going to be the one to go down. So he's the only other person they can kill. Tide, Anti Mage, they can't kill without getting initiating spells off. Yeah, but Lion overextending. They do punish him oh, for it. They find it Faith and... again. Goodbye, Faith. That was an interesting decision, uh, going up there essentially where he knew the relocate came from, but uh, I didn't really see his positioning. Maybe he was trying to do some harassing damage, maybe he just didn't realize that's where they initially spawned from. Either way, he goes down without them even committing the Omni Slash, so really good position to see that as they spread the map out. Lark is going to take a lot of hits though, and will be going down. They blink ravage him and have the Sunstrike to follow. Oh jeez, so uh, I mean, Radiant's you can't you can't afford to be dying off a Slark right now, Dyer's especially when you're one of the one of the main attack. cores that need to combat this AM. And I mean, what's he got currently? Still, he's far up the stacks. He's doing the jungle thing and playing some PVE Dota. This is this is gonna be very very scary. He's almost got the ultimate orb too. This is looking to be like a sub 20 minute Mansa too. Like, oh easily, yeah. He's gonna geez. be able to have that timing down perfectly so i mean lgd they're trying to do what they can they give him camps over to maybe uh the juggernaut just picked up his drums and he, he's nowhere near any kind of damaging item just yet uh q he's been farming up a little bit he's going for the hand of midas route yeah i like so. that i think that's really really important for them to yeah. actually be able to build them up to a relevant state in the game and uh I mean, you could have like an urn of shadows and uh, some more wards or a magic stick out, but uh, it's better to have the Midas and be able to build up your levels, be able to maybe have an Aghanim Scepter to try to deal with them when they're pushing your high ground. Because eventually it's going to come down to LGD committing just blink initiation, killing, picking off somebody, and it's going to be AA's job to turtle that high ground. So I think it's very important that he makes this decision now so he has the tools to maybe put them in the game later. Yeah, they're gonna put some pressure on the tier one man. The uh, glyph is refreshed, so we'll see what they can do. Blink and Ravage are not available. The Blink daggers are lined, but 50 seconds on the Ravage, and they throw back a pyre just to clear out the wave a bit. But you know, if we can tank it up with healing with a problem, and last hit goes over to Mage, so that's, that's a decent chance of change for him. And he's got six more, he, he needs only 600 more gold till he can finish off his Agonims, which is pretty nice. Uh, He's getting closer and closer to being yeah. a really good pushing threat. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like the anti-mage is already there. Like, getting the Battle Fury and the, oh, yeah. before the Tiny even begins the Aghanim Scepter, he just has such a tempo advantage, and it's going to be on C-Deck to actually move in towards a hyper late game here. As far as power curves, I was talking about it before, this is where Tiny doesn't really do that much. Like, he's going to go into farm mode, he'll get a kill or two with the help of the Wisp, but he really isn't going to be carrying the game on his shoulders at this particular moment. But, we jump fast forward to 45 minutes, he's going to be able to commit to base races because he's going to have that structural damage the anti mage can't compete with. Like the yep. AM can pop his Manta and try to right click towers, but he's still not going to do half the DPS that Tiny can do to the towers with overcharge. Uh, that as well, we're talking about the power curve of the Slark. And uh, Slark late game is like, if we're talking pa like around the hour mark, is actually even stronger than the 
anti-mages. The anti-mage has more mobility, but the Slark has more potential as in terms of being an anti-carry. So yep. him having the Midas, being able to move in towards those big items sooner rather than later, despite his rough start, I definitely think that's going to be what puts them in the game. They just have to really de figure out a way to deal with the anti-mage over the course of this next 15 to 20 minutes. And MMI just picked up his Blink Dagger too, so we'll see if they can get any Blink Hex initiations here to pick up some, some simple kills. And spin down 2 for 3 for 3, but they're looking to initiate possibly... Oh wait, they have Relocate available. I mean, they were just baiting them out with that spin. But Oh man, this Blink Dagger is going to be really big for MMY, and they spoke up too, they really want to commit to this. The Ags just picked up from Tiny, so this relocate gank is going to be very, very important for holding off this tier 1 tower push. Uh, let's see, Invoking Spirits, he's got his Necro 3 online too, so committing Dyer's to that all-out push tower. potential and okay. the Glyph is available. Let's see. Are they going to use it? Mm, yes, they are. And relocate. Are they prepping it just yet? A TP comes in from maybe. He goes to mid. And I guess they're just going to let it fall. Yeah, I'll get the last hit. Ice Blast connects, but there's nothing to go forward. And, oh, MMY failing the Hex after Blink. Trying to, trying well, to get on. The, the Dark Pack was already in action. Oh, no, Dark Pack okay. is a really good counter to Hex and is going to be able to take it, take it away 9 out of 10 times, even though Hex has an instant cast animation. It's just Dark Pack. It's. It's not only instant, but you don't have to click on anything, so it's even feels a little bit faster. But we are going to see the necro and oh. the force spirits go on the tower, and wow, Yow? Slark just jumps in. He they retreat off of Yao though, so there's some good zoning coming in. But here comes maybe Avalanche does oh. not connect. He's going to get pushed back. There's the earth spike on top of it, but a big, big ultimate going to come in from the H. Not pushing connects on Yao and to Faith. Faith is going to pop. There's a tether onto MMY. The Ravage comes on in. Maybe they're trying to pick up the skill. He tosses them back up the Force Spirit. He's going to get Cold Feet Proc. No, actually, it's not. As they put it onto the uh, Force Spirit instead, and it's only a one for none. That's uh, yeah. not surprising. But, and they lose the t top tier 1, that's the big thing. They lose yeah. a, a decent amount of HP on the tier 2 tower. They lost their bottom tier 1, their top tier 1. And they just... Oh, they died of the Sunstrike! Wait, what? Oh, no, I missed it! No! I can, I can actually rewind this? No, I can't. MMY... Really no, you can't anymore. But it was a, just a jump in, Earth Spike, Finger of Death, Sunstrike. MMY plus Yao equals death. The Ancient Apparition falling there and... Yeah, they're looking to close this one out pretty soon here, especially with the Mantis style up on Silar. He has absolutely nothing to fear in this entire game. Like, there is no way that he dies with the current state for a very, very long time. They have five people on him, maybe he can go down with the perfect chain of disables, otherwise he just blinks out. So what this means is that LGD goes four-man Dota whenever they have Ravage, because Relocate, the Wisp in general is really bad. At going up against four or five man Dota, he usually wants to just kind of surprise, relocate, pick people off, and spread the map. That's what he's good at. But because LGD are stronger now, they can just group up together with a death ball. Maybe Siler farms off the side lane and pushes by himself. But in general, they're just going to be able to take more off the map. And C deck, they're just going to try to hold on for dear life. Yeah, so I just want to let the stream know that if you think it's laggy, it's just I keep tabbing out because I have to check uh, other stuff. So don't mind that. It's just it's just a brief lag, if anything. Everything's on fine on my end though. I'm not dropping any frames or anything like that. So the stream is perfectly stable for me. I don't know if it's your internet or not, but just clearing that up, just so you guys know. But uh, yeah, we're at this really big point for uh, Sal right now. Like you said, Meta Style deals with everything. There's, there is nothing for him to worry about unless he gets put low enough to where an ice blast could kill him. But, yeah, like if he's making, attack. if he's that low, I think he's going to be ma like making a mistake in general. Like Ami slash ice blast has some kill potential. If the honey is somehow in range for avalanche, there's also the threat. But th in all reality, Dyer's even with a drum tower. charge active, Siler should be able to avoid anything but a blink tiny. Like this should, they, he should not be able to connect with any spells. And uh, yeah, they're just able to finish things off here. So deny comes out for the tower down bottom as the summons were what we're trying to bring it down. And uh, without committing to it, they do take a little bit of gold off the map. Yep, and I mean, they're not even threatening Siler. Like he was in the middle of that lane. They were like, yeah, just keep farming stacks, whatever. Just, just ignore him. I mean, you can only ignore an anti mage for so long until he's just knocking away at your door with a bash or a BKB, and you're just like, oh, oh crap, why do we ignore him? But he's still 101, 22 and a half minutes into this game, and I mean, this is this is gonna be a problem. And there they go, they hit the Earth Spike. Oh, he doesn't get the Dark backed off. Oh, the figure for the kill too. Oh no, that's a that's a disaster. 50 seconds on his respawn too. 
Jeez. Damn. This is just a really hard game for C-Deck. They'll try, keep on trying to spread, but LGD, they're gonna go Dyer's in for the jugular here. Tier 2 mid, attack. they've got three people there. The uh, Lion can make his way there pretty quickly Dyer's with the Tranquils and Blink. And Anti-Mage just pushes up. The Ice Blast barely dissuades them, being at only level 1 right now. The Midas still Radiant's hasn't really kicked in, and he hasn't attack. been able to get that second point in Ice Blast. Radiant's so, four Mandota on the mid lane, and nothing to stop them. Dyer's yeah, man, nothing to stop Solar up top, too. He's gonna get himself a Tier 2 push, going on with his, uh, when he wants to pop it, but he's got to save anything. But either way, taking two towers, keeping the pressure mounted, and not losing anything for it. This is some uh, nice methodical play from LGD. Gotta say. Sidok so have to find a way to turtle this game out. They have to stretch this 20 minutes more. And they do really do have a chance of bringing this one back, because the anti-mage will start falling off, but... I just, I don't see them killing the anti-mage, and that's the key to actually putting themselves back into it. Otherwise, they just spread the map, they get a tower here, a tower there from the tiny. Um, but there are no, like, tier 1s to relocate, so that means they have to have the creep wave pushed out, and, uh, good play from LGD to make sure that backdoor production is always available against the tiny. <laughs> they're even they're even being so efficient as to clear the wave out Radiant's four seconds before the hard <laughs> the ancient stack respawns and then uh -huh. yeah this is crazy yeah Siler Siler is such a boss when it comes to being efficient in farming he's done that I think three times this game just making sure that he gets the clear the moment before he needs to exit and. The big thing is Roche. Like, who do you think could actually take a Roche fight if the Tiny gets, like, the perfect Avatos? As a target? Like, I, I don't know. Oh, well, we'll hold the thought and look at a haste room pickup. There was no vision on that, so they're gonna go in, maybe find the anti-mage here. They oh, lose the so smoke, cost. they know somebody's near, but he's already blinking out. No TP, but they can't close the distance, and he's gonna have another blink. Yeah, so, he's fine. Their smoke play fails, and they re even sunstrike the pit just to make sure. So uh, they will have the Ford Spirit scout things out. And I mean, if they go for this, it could be it could be just game ending. Honestly, Ravage, uh, Deafening Blast, and Sunstrike combo. So much damage comes out from that. Uh, but see that they're like suffocating right now because they're farming but they're not farming as well <laughs> this anti mage is 4,000 net worth ahead DKB comes on through they're gonna find him and why and wow. okay easy pick nice one for them killing spree coming up from maybe two on the tiny so that that definitely helps out hmm. I think that gets on the Roche but we'll see uh, yeah, I don't the anti-mage doesn't want to come to a fight now is the big thing so I think they can just co-clean up Roche here no way. even if LGD know about it but they are so afraid of that blink ravage I mean obviously yeah. the four staff is there too the macro pyre the invoker combo exhort is is beastly in an AoE circumstance so yeah they are really afraid and they Ooh. will not commit to anything in particular the heart was also just finished by Seller too that's that's a 25 minute heart man to BF like holy crap mm. Yeah. This is this is some phenomenal farm. 280 creeps at 26 minutes, like crazy. Radiant Above 10 per minute, which is nice. Is uh -huh. So we have the Yules online too for MMY. He's found himself a fair bit of farm, and I mean, are they just gonna force it? They they should be feeling pretty confident. They'll clear out the wards, and I mean, just put Siler in the pit. Once he has Aegis, push high ground. Don't don't fret. Don't fear anything. If he loses the Aegis, just respond afterwards, but Ice Blast, this is going to be pretty big. It's on the two. There is the initiation coming for the storm. He leaves on the high ground. He's stuck there now. Blink Dagger on cooldown. They're going to find a finger. They pull up the jump and force out a buyback. There's an Epic Blast Meteor combination. Maybe. Gotta look to go down here, but the relocate saves nice him. Nice relocate, but he still had popped the BKB with it. So that means, yeah, essentially the real kid pulled him out, and then he BK beat him found him, essentially, which just happened there, which is very unfortunate. They lose the Aegis to Silar. They go in, are going to try to clean up the rebound. Silar, so tanky with his heart, goes right in and drains all of Tiny's mana here. But he's getting overcharged, so he's getting healed up. There's a Craggy actually proc coming through, too. And the Omni Slash from 333 is doing so much damage. And uh, he's trying to do what he can. They pick off the Jakir, they kill the Lion and the Invoker. This fight turned on its heels. Holy crap. And they don't kill the Anti Mage, as he does have his heart still ticking away, as well as the Aegis. But that's a four for uh, one and a buyback from the Jug. So the relocation save 
coming in from the wisp, actually turning that fight around and making it only a four for two or four for three, excuse me. Technically, yeah, that's actually huge. I mean, you look at the rubber band gold a little bit. You get three thousand uh, up for C deck. You have eleven hundred down for LGD. The intimate still survives, but I mean, we we already knew that he wasn't gonna die twice for that age. And the sages are probably just gonna expire of its own volition. They're not gonna bother trying to kill him twice. But as I get that fight, they get to force the uh, down bottom, not worrying about ravage, but still worried about the invoker damage. The initiation like earth spike, meteor deafening blast. It is still a little bit much if their BKBs aren't up and available, but yeah, they, they back off for now and they, they definitely put themselves into this game with that last team fight there. The Anthony Mage didn't get all the damage that he wanted to, as you mentioned, the Wisp Tether healing up both mana and HP as he came back from the fountain, so that was huge for making sure that there was no mana void and Siler's Mantis style cooldown wasn't up just yet, so it wasn't the time for Siler to fight and it was C deck to go in for round two. I really, really like the way they played that and although it cost the Juggernaut's Omni Slash, I, they can just spread them out now. Tiny, going for the tier two top. This tower dies in about seven seconds to this Tiny if he actually gets there without back Exactly production. seven seconds? All right, let's see. Well, uh, I would see a lineup. Yeah, I mean, he's not gonna try it with no, unless, when everybody's off the map, but I would definitely say, uh, just unmolested, he's gonna be able to bring that tower down very, very quickly. All right, and uh, this Necro 3 pickup from Yao too doesn't really seem like it's effective right now either because they did the pushing that they wanted to. They haven't broken high ground yet, and the Necro's just kind of sitting there unused for a long extended period of time. Um, in the team fight, so it's okay, but for now, it just kind of just kind of feels like a useless item until maybe the next team fight. We'll see Slark. He's got the BKB. He's got 2300 gold. He's not even close to his Scotty either. So it's it's going to be rough for him to recover a bit. Yeah, not much alternate for the Invoker to go at this Radiant's position. He's still using his spells very effectively. Attack. Maybe a Blink Dagger could come offline, give him a little more, but I think he'll go for BOTs as his next option. Either case, the big thing to look for is the timing of Injulai's Refresh Orb already has. Uh, most of the Oblivion staff, all the Perseverance, and then just needs the recipe. So, not the quarter staff for the recipe, and suddenly you've got double Ravage. There are a lot of BKB services, there's the spin of the Juggernaut, or the Omni Slash, but if he hits a good Ravage, starts it off like we saw on the Tiny, where they could just get the chain stun, and he yep. can't pop the BKB, then that's game breaking. So, let's see. If they can break high ground here, a minute and about 20 seconds left on this Aegis 2. So, maybe they're going to want to put to use Siler. Goes up to high ground and they're going to put workout on this. They force the glyph out early too. So, we'll see. Keep the pressure out, needs some toss damage, but he's got the heart to take him back up to full health. And it's going to be up to C deck to see if they can hold this right now. Ice Blast is going to connect in on only Siler. But, again, the tower falls. He's just fearless up on this high ground. No man to charge though. Uh oh, oh jump in comes in from Slark and then why? Yeah, just ignore the empty mage and try to just kill everybody off on the side. BKB is coming out galore. There's the Omni Slash. There's a spin. Wow. They just completely destroy that Jakiro. Looking for Yao next. He's running around with his BKB on. Siler in the back of the fight. Just still not wanting to die. Ravage comes in on the three members as they split. They get the deafening blast. There's a battle break as they cannot kill off the Tiny though. Reloki going to keep him alive again. And Siler not able to get these kills even on the back of a great Ravage from in July. Oh, jeez. Yeah. The Ravage was nice, but I mean, Sita just played that so smart. Avoiding the AM at all costs, kiting him as the best you can against a hero that has a 5 second cooldown blink, and they were able to minimize his impact. They, the BKB has helped with that, but in general, it's just Siler actually can't do that much to the mountain here. Like, he can right click all day long, but he doesn't have a BKB against the craggy exterior, and the mana void wasn't really that big. So, I mean, it, will, it will almost was, but the healing ward and the defensive relocate, and suddenly they're fine. So, that was really smart because. They had to wait a full minute and 10 seconds on the Aegis. They didn't want to take that fight against the AM. So they just say, screw it, go right for the supports. And then Y dies early, and they, they really do pick him apart. Great movement from the Slark in particular, going in just man mode, blinking with the Shadow Dance. Yeah, and I I just want to highlight, like, Garter right now. He's, he's like the MVP of this game. Had it not been for him, maybe it would have died so many times in these fights and not be 7-1 right now. So, this Wisp play, man, 
so crucial for C deck. And I mean, once once the butterflies online, I guess for Siler, maybe he'll look to just run into the fights and try to fight, or maybe he'll just. Oh, I mean, he, I think he already is. Like he was completely fearless, had absolutely no reason to regard his own safety in that last fight. But it really comes down to what the damage he can deal, and maybe he even pops Flutter in the midst of the fight to avoid being kited because. Mm. He doesn't really need the durability or the evasion. Uh, he's already near immortal. But as far as you know, carrying the team on his shoulders, doing the damage he needs to, he's in an offensive sense, that's the question. <laughs> he is no Medusa right now, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Am Am gets cut way too hard, and I mean, he needs the uh, the abyssal blade. He needs. I don't, I don't think he needs a BKB, but once he has a abyssal blade, that means he'll guarantee the lockdown, and mm -hmm. he, he's got to kill Garter. Garter is his biggest problem right now. And oh my god, the Agnum Scepter's on line 2 for uh, Q. Ugh, Albeit it's only level 2 Ice Blast, but once he hits level 16. Yeah, even level 2 Ice Blast. Like, just getting them suppressed where they can't heal for the full duration, uh, it's insane. 17 seconds, uh, an extremely long time where they can't heal, where they're taking some damage over time, and where they have that risk of shattering. Like, right now is perfect timing for the, uh, the Tiny to be able to do so much work on the back of those big Ice Blasts. And right now, LGD, their positioning, the fights have been pretty clumped. They, they have to really make sure they maximize the damage potential of the Ravage, and as a result, they have to be within about 600 units of one another. So, uh, from the Well Ice Blast to uh, past the mid-tier 3, should be able to hit at least 3 heroes. Alright, let's see, Salar's committing here. Gonna look to take down the, the range racks at the least. I don't know if we'll get the melee, but we'll try. So, Ice Blast connects with the Avalanche, some good combination coming through. Keeping the pressure off, but the illusions are doing so much work. So he can just kind of wait that out, forcing the Slark Shadow Dance just from one missed pounce mm. over committed. And the Ice Blast really just keeps hard on cooldown, but that's all, and they can look to go in now. They have the Ravage at their back, so C deck are very wary right now for that Blink Ravage. And like we said, uh, Anthony can go wherever he wants to in these fights. Dodging away from the high blunge too. I mean, they toss him up, but coming in from the back here, this okay. is going to be a problem. They end up finding the stuns as well onto the tide hunter. He gets the ravage off, but the nice BKBs, BKBs are already relevant. Look at this. C deck with a great fight now, looking to make this ice blast count. Gonna connect in onto Yao. No, but the, a nice uh, duels up there. Siler picks off the kill onto the oh. Asian apparition, but the finger and the deafening blast meatball combination do not kill off the Slark. He's gonna start regenning off there, and oh no, coming forward, Silent finds the blink and the kill. It's a three for two so far. Looking for more, they're gonna find Guard of the Illusions to take away all that mana, and just coming in for the chops and the slapping. Yao gets that kill, forcing a buyback out of the Slark. Maybe gonna get, maybe, I'm not too sure, but they decided to back off. And they'll be content with the buyback of the Slark, who's still gonna try to clean up some kills here, but gotta be mindful that Silent is still full health. Yeah, the Siler won't go down, but it's also possible that the Tiny doesn't go down either. He will be if he's like 1v3. He's not a hero that can escape easily, even though he does have 414 MS. But because they have so many disables. So we looked at LGD's draft and we saw disable, disable, disable. They have so many stuns, so much lockdown, that that 414 is often 100 or less. But end of the day... It's still a very beefy Tiny. He has the Craggy helping him out against non-BKB'd right-clickers. He has tr almost 3,000 HP, and uh, he's going for the MKB to deal with this AM a little bit better. Siler actually has a chance of going down now. He oh, has geez. died zero times this game so far, no surprise at all, but they are getting to a point where they actually might find the first kill against him. This MKB is going to be huge, uh, especially in real quick respawn. Well, I guess it is about a minute and a half, but not kind of average. Kind of average indeed. I mean, once Slark gets a bit MKB2, that's that's when we really see the threat to, to Siler's life, but uh, that's if he even can find some room for that. But, uh, oh boy, this game is not really tense now. Between between Tiny and AM, you would think that AM would win late, but the Tiny has that oh. potential. No, I think people extremely overrate AM's potential in the hyper late game. Like, when you get past 50 minutes, it's he has a lot of rap potential, but as far as actual fight potential, unless you have maybe like a Dark Seer to create the Super Mana Void Bomb, mm -hmm. I, I'm not feeling it. Like, he's good against Medusa because of the counter of Mana Break versus Mana Shield, but up against like Tiny and Slark, he just doesn't compare. And not certainly not against both. Slark jumping on in, trying to find a kill nice out to this hero. The good Yules, like you just said, and he's able to get away from getting hit by uh, Scotty. So he actually doesn't have a Scotty. Excuse me, he's able to escape getting bashed <laughs> randomly. 
But in July has the pressure. pressure. Yeah, that's Double that's... Ravage, they're just gonna go right for their Rax. Yep. I think they can take this pretty easily. Let's see. Illusions and Silo are just going forward. Maybe can't really do too much. They actually sheep him up. Crackies. And can they get this kill here? The Ravage connects on a two. There's that relocate coming in from Garter just a small distance away. Looking to see if the refresher comes in. The Omni Slash is already doing its work. The AM not committing the mana point just yet. Yao's gonna slap down by this tree. MMY looking for the next target. He does use the heals defensively. And uh, it's only a one for none so far. Maybe with the godlike spree and Yao the only casualty. The refresher. Is just used yeah. by Angelai now. Surprisingly enough, didn't go for yeah. The I, was, I was really surprised they didn't go for the double like uh, adjacent ravages. They didn't do it in conjunction with the other one. And I think yeah. the reason is because the shadow dance was on the slark. It would still hit him, but he they wouldn't be able to do damage to the slark during it, which was the important thing. So hmm. it's an interesting choice. I, I'm not sure if the fight would have gone differently if they had just double ravaged then, but they have ravaged now, they're and uh, it's, they're aware of it. They see the, him on the Observer Ward on the high ground, so they know about the Refresher. They know about the threat of ref the second Ravage, even if they might not be sure whether or not he has used the Ward. Oh, look at this damage coming through. He's trying to take it up. More and more, everyone gets cracking. Oh, God. That's a lazy in uh, the entrance there, but in July, gets a two-man Ravage, but it doesn't matter. BKBs, the turns are on. As now, maybe he's gonna get the drum charge. They're looking for a kill these pesky supports. They will take down Faith. 3-3 gets that one, and the Yule's in onto MMY, who blinks out. And uh, he'll try to get away, but look at this. The speed with the tether, and this is a fast-ass uh, fast juggernaut. He gets stunned up by the spike, but three seconds and blink. Can you get away, MMY? The great chase. He blinks, and nice. starts to TP. And they don't guess correctly. Yeah, all right, he's out. Still, I am really impressed that C-Duck were able to rally the troops that quickly, all just acting as Minutemen, jumping to defend their racks and uh, being able to hold the line. They were so spread out, like they were all across the bottom lane and over toward the Roach and Ancients and such, so to be able to get back to their base that quickly and fight it out, despite only having, like half of them having TPs, they were able to, to make that really work for them. And yeah, and July doesn't have to use the second Ravage for much. Uh, just this tiny is so damn big right now, and of course the Slurk does have that Aegis, so... Yeah, it's just gonna be harder and harder from LGD from this point on. I really feel like they peaked about eight minutes ago. I, I thought they would hit another peak with this second, with this Refresher Orb, but so far we haven't really seen too much from it. Yeah, that, that mid-fight where he could have blinked back in and, and used the Refresher, I believe, was the misplay of the game. So. Uh, it's hard to call because obviously there's so many BKBs flying about, and they, he knew they'd be popped as soon as they came out of his first Rabbit Stun. So he either uses them on top of one another, or he doesn't use the second one at all, is essentially mm -hmm. how, what it came down to. And It's a tough He's call not. to use that second one when you can't really focus the targets you want to during it. The Tiny was in range without BKB, and the Slark was in Shadow Dance without BKB active. So he could have hit two four heroes, but that would have only delayed the fight. It wouldn't have actually given them more kill potential because the Tiny is big with Craggy and the Slark was in Viz. Alright, so Axe have to pick up for the Juggernaut now too. 12 bounces on the Ivy Slash, that's a pretty good deal. More invulnerability while he's bouncing away doing damage and uh, that's a pretty big item. So, we'll see. I mean, C-Dick looks like they want to push. The Tiny's feeling strong, he's feeling confident, he's got his Daedalus now too. Oh god, 1,000 crits, here we come. These supports from LGD stand no chance, actually, against this. Radiance middle oh god, look at that. Look how attack. fast he waxes it down. It's 3, 4, yeah, that's five, without the Tiny. middle has fallen. Just destroys it now. I mean, obviously the Breeza can't crit the towers, but it can do a lot of work against the Anti-Mage. And... Uh, yeah, beyond that, the MKB AC are obviously laying into Mr. Anti-Mage here, but uh, he's still gonna try, he has the Abyssal Blade. I think he needs a BKB though, like you hate to get a BKB this game because there's so little it does for you. Uh, I mean, there's so few things matter about it, but the big thing is this Craggy. It makes the Tiny impossible to kill. He's been Craggy twice in every fight that I've seen. I've been trying to select Siler and keep an eye on that, but... It's like, it's essentially Tiny having a basher for every time you attack him. And it just so happens Anti-Mage attacks extremely fast right now. 0.43 seconds chance. per attack. That's yeah. a lot of chances to be craggied. Yeah. Oh man, this is, this is one close game. I gotta say, this series between these two teams have just been absolutely absurd. <laughs> like, this is crazy Dota. And, uh, I mean, even despite ignoring Silent, like, this is something that you would never expect. Like, ignoring an Anti-Mage for... What, like 25 minutes of just farming non-stop 
and having him only have one range rocks to show for it right now mm -hmm. just just really shows how underwhelming it feels well it's definitely not underwhelming but oh, it shows uh... how really good sea duck are at uh, getting past the power spikes of LGD. Like, they there were able go. to drag out the game when LGD were at their greatest uh, potential, and now they're in a position where they can easily take it because of how scalable their heroes are. They pick Greedy, and they, they don't even pick Turtle Heroes, but they still manage to make the game last 43 minutes with this composition. Like, this is something that you don't usually see. But, you know, Tiny threatening oh. towers here and there, and now this actually a, a big around. flank. Can they? They need to kill Garter. Garter needs to be dead. Like before, they find oh, Garner in the tree line, the Abyssal, they get him down! They're gonna be able to do it, the Ravage comes on through on the two as well! A three, excuse me! And he doesn't have refresh throw, yes he does actually, but not enough mana for the secondary Ravage, the Omni Slash is gonna be the one to oh. pick him off. And there is a big leech on the MMY, but this, man, this Slark is just going rampant in the back line. Maybe still alive, and oh my god, they did it. And the only one to survive was Siler. Everybody else just dies. They're, they're like fodder, just running in and dying. They're just slaughtered out there. They force a buyback out of the, the Wisp, but... It doesn't matter, he just relocates into the fight and they win it. Yeah, they absolutely destroy it. I mean, bottom line is Siler is only able to address the supports right now. The Slark will shadow, just shadow dance away, and the Tiny, I don't want to keep mentioning it, but Craggy Radiant's Exterior is just a passive that he cannot overcome right now. And the Ravage Radiant only times one, and they just can't take the fight. The Antimage is getting out carried, and it, it's sad because this was a free farm Siler Antimage. But at the end of the day, he's not able to rat this one out. You have global mobility from the tiny IO, so rat play is not always the best play. And when it comes down to brute strength, nobody can outmatch the mountain. Oh god, see next servers, please. I'm lagging again. No. So, let me tell you, give you a play by play. Tiny is playing Demolition Crew, just destroying all of mid lane, all of bottom lane. Both melee racks are down. They leave the range to tell the tale of the, the destruction. But maybe, maybe goes down, actually. He's taking a lot of hits, but real case, probably forced out, and the Ravage interrupts it! No relocate out! Tiny dies for the first time in the past 30 minutes. Oh, they will speed away with the Juggernaut, the IO, Tether move at speed, but Silo looking for the Abyssal, the Gush, and the Abyssal Blade to finish off the Wisp. That is two down, and that is a dieback, essentially, from the Wisp. So, 75 seconds without two heroes, but Tiny does have buyback. Yeah, the Wisp not having buyback is a pretty big thing, big, though. big thing, though. Losing Overcharge is what's been really mm. giving them this game, and, I mean, at this point, with Wisp dead, you force the buyback from the Tiny, and you try to fight four versus five. Yeah, but that's, there are zero Ravages, so yeah. it's gonna be a hard fight. Like, they take the racks easily, but as I mean, far as taking the heroes, that's a much more more difficult proposition. Tiny coming back into it. Siler. He though. This, this sh they shouldn't be that scared. Without the Wisp, there's just a lot of damage gone, but wait, hold on. Coming from the back, I might be wrong. Yeah, we're gonna be initiated by the Omni Slash. They force staff, he gets the Ghost Walk off. So I was gonna get a Bizzle Blade down. They get the nice spike in from the Earth Spike, and they get the Deafening Blast as well, but maybe was BK beat up. Look at those crits coming in. Clear it. Oh, he needs one more. But the Tornado coming in, and it actually is gonna stop the Pouncing from the Slark. Nice Ice Path on the two, and okay, they clear up one set of racks, and we're, so. we're, we're at this really weird point. <laughs> yeah, it is a weird point of the game for sure. Essentially, Tiny can't make any mistakes here. Maybe has to be moving perfectly across the map. Since he did get picked off on the tail end of that retreat, uh, the they force the buyback on the Tiny, they get the mid melee racks, and they're happy to walk away with that, thanks to them having, uh, you know, 10,000 disables. So they, they keep the stuns, they keep running, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a good chain of pickoffs, but they are down... Uh, I, I would say at least you could say half a Rex. Like, they are down one melee Rex and up one range Rex, but the value of those just differs so significantly. It's funny because LGD have been ahead of gold the entire game, and after like that, that little bit of a fight at 35 minutes where they're trying to break the high base, they took a 12,000 XP lead, or actually almost a 14,000 XP lead. But, uh, I mean, levels at this point, like, uh, where are they? Ah. Yeah, you could definitely use the 16 at this point, uh, maybe the Jakiro as well. But yeah. other than that, it, it really comes down to just who's alive. Yeah. Like, straight up, the Tiny, the Wisp not having buyback, and the fact that the Anti-Mage still hasn't died this game. He's 9-0-4, like, that'd be a hell of a kill streak to end. But 47 minutes in, and we're still going strong. <laughs> Oh, he's, he's got to be like, I want my fantasy points. I just want to not die. Come on, man. <laughs> just keep me alive, team. Jeez. Uh,
<sighs> they have to deal with supers in bot lane too. This, these are these are super ranged, but they still push the lane effectively and just keep it up. So, I mean, LGD could look to try to equalize that and just keep pushing down bot, and maybe look to break high ground that way. But again, uh, they this tiny and Slark man, they're putting in so much work. Uh, it's it's so hard to break the base, and he's got the crits, the MKB. He's not missing anymore to the butterfly. What's he gonna get next? Boost the travel? Mm, what can he afford to drop? His BKB is only five seconds too. I don't think he can drop anything. Yeah, it really depends on what he wants to do with these next ten minutes of the game. Like, if he wants to rat, he still needs the battle fury. If he wants to fight, he needs to drop the battle fury. Honestly, it's. It really comes down to, I, th I think actually you don't sell the battle for you just put it in stash and then you switch between uh, pushing and fighting. But Ooh. for now they're going for the Roche. Somebody's got to take the Aegis and I believe, yeah, the Cheese as well. And uh, they're too afraid. They're, they're worried that there's going to be an invasion from C Deck. They know they can't take a head on fight. Yeah, and C Deck was, I guess, kind of wary of the position of LGD too. So kind of heading over there already and uh, clearing out some wards. So. I mean, I, I guess it was safe from LGD either way. The Vortex would scout them out, and the ping's coming through. They want to do it. Nice path picks up to the high ground. They're going to kill off this ward and back right out of the pit. Oh, man. The battle, the battle for this this plateau ward is just so so important for both of these teams right now. Mm -hmm. But everybody's got a bot, and they're just going to go straight out mid. Wait a minute. LGD, they're going to commit to something a little dangerous. There's still three dire TPs. They have the relocator as well. Slark and Tiny, they can only taxi service back one, but Slark is quick on his feet outside of vision and he does have that blink dagger. So he's already home. And uh, they do have the fortification. So the tier three tower will fall. So let's see what the rest. They're trying to go in at the silo. They get the abyss, but a good force that keeps him out of the ice blast. And the relocator is gone, so Wisp is not in this fight. Uh -oh. He can TP back though, so I guess that's just a three second delay. Yeah, they should be fine. Actually, a five second TP. No, oh well. <laughs> but the tower still falls, and they're gonna look to go for this still. Uh, there's there's no Shadow Dance, there's no Ice Blast, there's no Relocate. I mean, they should be feeling pretty confident at this point to try to break the high base, but again, the right clicks are a little other story. <laughs> the right clicks from C Deck are just way too big. And the Super Creeps are doing their thing now, Bot. This is gonna actually destroy this melee Rax. So, that looks like have to do something. And Omni Slash, now it's like slash is critting away. But the beat the structure's down, the fortified, and the melee racks die. Okay, so they're just gonna give another set of super creeps to the bot side while trading up just ranged supers up top. I don't yes. know. So it's a like range it. for a range, I mean, in the end, but uh, it means less farm for Siler when he's clicking off those creeps there. Not that he really needs much more gold. I think you were earlier asking about Tiny's end progression. I was talking about anti mages. So it's all good. Uh, it's cross the same thing. There. Same thing. Literally. It's just like, about. They they really are tower. about to hit their peaks attack. there. Um, are they gonna lose this tower? Oh whoa! MMI getting picked off here. The BKB coming out from Slark. So that is gonna be a kill. Oh, go step there. Yules. and blink away. He's, he's got blink. Action. Dark packs. Oh no! Oh, the tornado connected. Wow. Yeah, that's For insane. that split second, he got out. Ooh, ice blast to base? No, that's not gonna hit. No. All right. So, um, as far as the the tiny, I actually think Manta style could replace the BKB and the power treads, obviously replaced by BOTs, because uh, the BKB is down to five seconds. But you are up against Anti Mage, who loves to burn mana and try to void off of that. You do have the double ravage, so. Maybe the five second BKB is just too valuable, but he gets the BOTs at the least. That'll certainly replace the treads, and then he has to decide if he wants the five if values the five second BKB or the Manta more, because Manta is actually extremely good on Tiny. But oh, this DD, it's costly too. This is a 500 damage hitting anti mage that could break the game. So yeah. Slark ulti coming back up like in 10 seconds and it's passing so like ships in the night. This is insane. Jesus Christ, this game. And they just go back for the racks, but the backdoor protection, can they break through it with the yes, illusion with the double damage? Yes, this is easy. This is easy to break through. Look at this damage going through. Boom, oh, boom, the Roche in exchange, though. She's and Aegis coming out for the side of C deck. Maybe won't be able to get any of it, but maybe somebody else will. Uh, Aegis for the Slark, good carrier in that, and Cheese for 3 3 3. Only dropping his stick, so that's, that's easy enough. At this point, it just comes, it comes down to the throne. Like, there are. Two racks left standing for C deck. There are three racks left standing for LGD, but Mega Creeps don't even guarantee anything. The Battle Fury and the Agadens is enough to clear out those waves. So 
uh, on the anti-mage and tiny respectively. So that means that essentially they just go for the tier four. So all, fortification is half its cooldown right now for the dire side. The radiant have theirs up. So uh, going over to buybacks, everybody but the tide has it. The lion should have it in about 30 gold here. Okay, so that's another big thing to look at is just the factor of who dies, who can buy back, and how are they going to lose this game if they don't have buybacks. But, uh, and also, who can get back into the fight? Like, if both Ravages are expended and you go for buyback plays, you can relocate back into the fight, you can BFT yep. back into the fight. Yep, yep, yep. Can we go in? On to Silar, the missile, but... Nice turn! Got this is coming through with this damage, there's a Ravage on top of it, they might end up being able to take out the Slark as they can, but he's got the Aegis. Alright, so he'll be coming back into this fight. That was a lot expended, but they just refreshed the Ravage and they'll heal back up in the fountain, no problem. Yeah, okay. so... A big kill, a big kill. Taking down the Aegis, at least. One Ravage for one Slark. They don't feel confident they're gonna back off. It's tough, I mean, obviously they're losing their top, but... They, yeah, well, actually, they don't need to force the issue. They have, as the late game goes even further, as this game gets drawn out, I think that they're in a better position, so they don't have to go for an aggressive play, even though there is a chance they could have just broken them there and then. But they just back off, they wait for the Slark to build up his butterfly, that kind of thing is the smart and safe play. Alright, I mean, man, these teams really, really just want to win. And, I mean, they'll do anything to do it. They're playing safe. Scythe the Vice was picked up by 3332, so you could just use that while Omni Slashing and, uh, mm -hmm. you're good to go. This, this is interesting. I've never actually yeah. seen a Scythe on, in Juggernaut before. That's weird. I, I like Scythe in late game in general, but his big issue is just he can't hit people. There are three Ghost Scepters up and one no Butterfly. Damage. So I would, I would say Diffuse the Blade would be a little bit better, but Hex is, you can't count out Hex. Like, if he can just get into a position where he can Hex for the Slark and Tiny, they can be the damage dealers, and he won't worry about it. Still, somebody needs to purge if they're going to be able to kill the Ghost Scepter supports. Otherwise, they wait it out and just let the Tiny's Cleave take its toll after the expiration. I mean, a set device can decide the game, too, in itself, you know? Just skinning mm -hmm. it on the AM or on Yao, take him out of the fight. Uh, ghost Scepter is legit, though. That, like, that item, yes. like... Ghost Scepter is amazing. If you're hexed, but you're a ghostly hex, then it, it doesn't really matter. It's always fun to see a like, Lycan that gets hexed while he's uh, shape-shifting and just runs away. So. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, this haste room. Alright, maybe picks it up. Uh-oh. We're looking to go mid? Possibly with relocate? Eh, I don't no. think that haste room really changes anything. Like, no. he's still insanely fast with tether. And if he has DD, BFTs maybe. across the map. <laughs> yeah, DD. Hello, Illusion could have been insane, but... Nah, the haste is just, eh, I can farm a little bit faster. And he clears out the entire top wave in just Jeez. two quick hits. 1200 crit? Alright, cool. Awesome. Awesome hero. So, I mean, at this point, I mean, Cena could just force a base race scenario out too with just the tiny IO. Uh, but, I mean, I don't think LGD is going to leave their, their, their side of the river for a long time. Until at least three members of C deck are dead. So, uh... Everybody got blinked back into the base though. Don't want anybody to get caught out. Oh god, they find MMY. They go separate and force him forward. And July, whoa, this Omni Slash is a little aggressive. Oh, if that had followed him up into the high ground there, that would have been a dead, dead Omni. And now with Omni down, uh oh. oh he gets Craggy. Craggy, the best spell in the game. That pass is coming in. Salad gets away from the uh, tether. They'll be AA picks out for MMY though. With the Ice Blast and Biggie forward, Slark, Slark looking to get a kill. They force a buy back out of MMY, the tornado does not connect. Salar still looking for something. Oh, Ravage committed, he connects on a who and even actually stops three nice three. Bash. bash comes in on the Q, he's gonna Got fall. Gemma Trusai drops, and Salar up on the high ground still. That's a nice Ice Blast, zoning them through the Earth Spike, the Daphne Blast and the Meatball. Look at all this damage going in. Three to three, disarmed and trying to run away. There's a refresh on the run, gonna hit it the four. So much damage coming in. LGD doing the candy Ice Blast on a four two. Silar's so much chopping away, doing what he can. This is a two man Earth Spike, this is so well for LGD. Maybe gonna fall. And LGD finally looks like they've done it. Double cracking. Oh my oh god. Boy. He didn't even use his BKB in that fight. Siler, he was holding his BKB on the courier. He has a second courier right here on the front in the front of the base with a nine second BKB on it. Siler was gonna use that after he had to buy back. Essentially he fights with his battle group for the first fight, then buys back and swaps to BKB. So he has a nine second BKB to deal with the Craggy to close out the fight and mop it up. He didn't even need to buy back, he didn't even need to use that BKB held on the courier. All these resources in reserve. Silar just goes in and the stuns do their job. I mean so many ice pass early 
Spurs, Spikes, and Ravages connecting onto several heroes. And see that they just don't have the control. They have the Hex on Juggernaut, oh, the Avalanche, and that's it. They literally don't have hard lockdown. And we talked about this in the draft, but it's one thing that you can't really talk about how it scales into the late game. Like when BKBs are at five seconds, any stun is a late game spell. It's, I mean, reverse polarity used to be considered like, oh, this is the, this is the late game spell. Black hole, that's the late game spell. But now that BKBs are stuck at five seconds, and uh, an ice path can be a late game spell. Like it can be insane at this stage in the game. And in this case, in that fight, in the choke point, they were to get so many clutch stuns and see the just oh, control. Salar. Oh Jesus, that crit too, but oh, MY plays forward. Ice path, no dodges. Faith, looking oh. to get the back of fire out, they find MY. They're gonna take him down, not looking for more. Salar going forward, Omni Slash connects, but he's able to just turn it off by using the Manta. BKB up for nine seconds, and they're bleaking back out of this, oh. but MY to fall. Boy, he's got no buyback. Yeah, this is actually really rough for LGD for this moment. They do have three buybacks, but Siler has no BKB, switches right back to the Cory. He's like, okay, screw it, it's on cooldown for another <laughs> minute. So he puts on the Cory, gets his Battle Fury back in a moment. But the big thing here is Ravage is in 30 seconds. So okay. Tide lives for 30 seconds, or just buys back with it, that's great. But otherwise, this could be the, the base breaker right here. They need spells to connect. So, all right, EMP Tornado, they're stunning him up. Cold Snap as well, helping him a ton. But he's getting healed up way too fast. Look at that. Just hit the Skip racks, dude. It's one shot of him. Yeah, oh. like, he's too scared. I mean, Cena is playing very scared right now. Salar as well jumping out of the base, too, to zone oh, away the Slark. The waiting game, the Ravage. It's up. Mm -hmm. it's up. That's all they need to do is wait for the Ravage, and now Cena are the ones who have to retreat. Yeah, really good space created by LGD. Salar just keeps himself up front. They drop the ice wall, the ice paths, and. Oh boy, Dyer's what are they gonna do? The effigy dies. Oh, Juggernaut's effigy. It's yeah. down. Oh no. The thing comes out. The game breaker, 100 gold to everybody on the team. Oh god. BKB Tornado again coming through, and he'll just BKB through it, looking to go into Faith. Look oh, at that oh. crit come out. Oh god. Still, that's his BKB, and the Ravage one is up. Ravage 2 in 18 seconds, and Siler's BKB is off cooldown on the Courier. Actually, he swaps it back to his own person. 8 second BKB. No, back to the Courier. He's just a Battle Fury pushing. So oh, he's just. a tier 4. <sighs> Those right creeps, almost 30 health. So Solar right now playing seven slot Dota is running Battle Fury for the moment to clear out the mega or the super creeps rather, and then uh, he has BKBs eight second for the fight. But uh, you never know. I mean, this game could go another 10 minutes. It's really really hard to call at this point. I think that C deck had a really good. They have really good heroes. At a 59 minute game, they have insanely good heroes. But they only have one stun, and that is crippling oh. them in these fights. Going in, let's see, they're looking for Angelize and Fancy Jukes coming in. Nice Fancy. hiding. Yeah, really nice uh, angle adjustment there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the only word I could look for. Angular adjustment? I don't even know if angular is a word. <laughs> uh, it works. It works. It's just, he, he's able to outmaneuver them, and <laughs> here we are, smoke and deceit. Where's the Vlads at? We need a Vlads for Siler, somebody pick one up. Yeah, Jakiro. it's kind of it's kind of odd that they haven't been able to pick that up. I think Vlad's is underrated because obviously the armor is insanely good. The lifesteal is great with uh, Mana Break because it's physical. The physical damage from the Mana Break actually is part of the lifesteal if you have Vampire Cora. But yeah, either way, he's still doing a lot of work and it's not like he's lacking HP in these fights. He's really just wanting to do as much damage as possible. Maybe the base damage would be the the ticker there. I don't know, every aspect of Vlad's can contribute at this kind of stage in the game, so I think maybe the Lion should have it or something, but... I mean, Angel, I could pick it up too, but you know, whatever. <laughs> I uh, think he's more looking towards Shiva's or yeah. E-Blade or something. But nobody has the gold on their side, so they ping him out, actually. Yao using that uh, Midas really give their position away, but it, it's kind of obvious what they're trying to She's do right now. Double, there's going to be two Battle Furies on this Courier in a, in a couple minutes. So so like a a 7,000 net worth Courier alone. <laughs> Oh boy. Ice Blast. Connect. No buybacks oh, on C-Duck. Alright, this is, this is it. Fallen. Tier 4 falls. Can LGD close this game out, or are we gonna see it on the I think Tiny, they just have, minutes. they can relook at the base. Tiny can go into the tier th 4 right now. It's gonna be Siler to fall back, but he can't TP to the front line, so. He can buy his boots to travel. Oh no, never mind, he has to, never mind. That's what he used to get back, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. I mean, this is just farming Dota right now. Getting his Battle Fury 7 slot is like... I mean, with AM back here, I really think they could go for a relocate play on the Tier 3 right now, and at least force fortification. I mean, there's no... I guess there is some risk with the IO. He might get picked off, but... 
I think if he has, with his Ghost Scepter, he can wait out that 12 seconds. He just has to play it carefully, but I guess he's not confident without a Blink Dagger. <laughs> Alright, I'm, I'm becoming delusional now with this game. <laughs> uh, where is it? Roshan's up too. Cheese, Aegis. I mean, who's who's picking up the cheese here? In July, I guess, to get help with the second Ravage. Uh, Yao needs the Aegis for sure. But he's looking to build a... He's looking to build a pressure over his own. Yeah. I mean, double deafening blast with double meatball, like, you are gonna die. Yeah, and his Wex is pretty high too, so he can actually get a really long duration disarm as well. Mm -hmm. That could be really frustrating for the time. He's got that five second BKB, but oh, wow. only one in the fight, and you get a double disarm so from the deafening blast. The That's eight seconds, potentially. So give the Aegis the Tidehunter. Hopefully he can just Ravage die and refresh and Ravage die again, maybe. Uh... Yao has the refresher in about 900 gold, but he's just keeping reserved and making sure that he doesn't make sure that he has space for buyback. That's what I meant to say. But uh, all right, this is this is getting a little outrageous right now. 63 minute Dota, intense fights, full builds, and almost every level 25, I believe. Uh, where are you? Yeah, close. We're getting. There. We're getting there. At this point, like on a hero like Jakiro, I honestly would prefer to stay at level 16. I, I, I've mentioned this before, but I just hate the increased death timer on a yeah. support. It's like the the last stats are really not that useful for you. They're they're not bad, but four seconds of death timer for every level isn't worth the strength, agility, and intelligence you get up to 25. All right, but, eight slot Dota for the for Sila right now. <laughs> He's got his MKB. Oh boy. Oh, okay. So that's uh, gonna help against the Slark when he's trying to focus on him. Jeez, this guy's gonna have to micro his items very carefully. But, yeah, giving him the, the potential, that's the big thing. Yeah. Uh, Did he sell that Perseverance? Change his mind? Uh, yeah. I guess. No, no, it's on the main courier. No, and yeah. it is gonna be Yao's Refresh Orb coming out now. Too many couriers, I can't keep track. <laughs> All right. Uh, awesome. This is awesome. I mean, we've got double ra Ravage. We've got potentially double Meteor Deafening Blast. Where's where's Silo's Refresher Orb to get double Meta, <laughs> meta Void? Uh, double with Vessel Blade's legit. But true, true. Double BKB. Honestly, he's, yeah. he's focused on all these other items. I I, I don't think it's a, it's a Refresher anti mage game, perhaps. But... <laughs> like the Refresher PA games that we saw. Oh, but that's dirty. Because you get the B. If with, you refresh the BKB, and it's a completely different story. But he's not going to be able to rock BKB, Abyssal, and Refresher Orb on the same six slot because he's already bouncing between two other items on top of that. All right, here we go. There's some people skidding around the jungle. They're TPing back, and I mean the, the waves pushed out enough down bot, but they want to get this bot racks. They have to. And... <laughs> I think it's about time for Invoker to drop his Necro and pick up a Plink Dagger. Like, it's all about positioning now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, really. I mean, Ghost Walk is great for your movement speed. He's already running at 522 whilst Invis. But I, I would definitely say the Blink Dagger would give them the edge in that Blink Initiation. Since you can double hex with that Refresher, you can, as I mentioned, use all those cool spells. But for now, he's just running around 522, and sometimes that's fast enough. All right. Hitting that 65 minute point. I used to lots of fast aggression games, but I was wrong once AM was picked. And yeah, I'm glad we're casting this though. Obviously, like, during Dota, this is good Dota. Focus this on their thing, but Chinese Dota, especially the Grand Final, you, you just can't leave this uncasted. So I'm glad we were able to kind of jump in and fill in and pick it up. We're not getting paid for this or anything, but we're happy hey man, to do it. Whatever ad revenue I get, I'll give you. I'll give you that. The casting sick money. Casting sick money. Oh. Esports money. Double Abyssal coming through. Can they finally kill the Slark? No, he gets the Shadow Dance off. Salar gets affected up by the uh, Ice Blast. He's got to get back. And, okay. Deafening Blast comes through. And oh, the Ravage. Oh, the Ravage was only onto the uh, <laughs> Tiny. Can they get this kill? They knock him up. Lock him down, but it doesn't matter. He's no, hitting he's over Charge Shield. The double healing ward. That's 2.5x. Oh, they're looking to turn. They go right back on Yao. Yao, force that forward. Look at all this mobility coming in. They got the hex yeah, turn. Ravage, ravage, ravage. Ravage. ravage number two is online. Can he get it? This would be a big Ravage. It's going to be on the three. Maybe going to get a finger blast. And he finally falls. He flies back. Be the fight Carter falls too. He has his buyback available. He'll be coming in. Gee, oh, three to three. The Juggernaut. Oh my god, they passed the Juggernaut mid spin. He's going to fall. Buyback available for him. No, it's not actually. Aegis is popped from in July. He's going to be left to die. They don't care about him anymore. He'll be left to his own accord. Blinky Foe 
Oh, they dropped the cheese. Yeah. Real dies to shatter. Oh God, Emma, why? He's got a ghost scepter. Yeah, ghost scepter. He mid tossy cheese. Oh, oh, God. God. <laughs> but the still anti mage falls. What are they? Is. Actually, cheese during the toss and is now full HP and mana. But what can he really do? Spamming out all the spells he can. Enjoy Maybe it's all on his own. They need the damage to the anti mage. You gotta get dropped the ice wall as well. Siler's back into this fight. The abyssal stuff there. Abyssal blade. You gotta slide him off. Double Kragi. He's still oh. alive. Oh god. <laughs> what is happening? And they do not kill the. Oh, they got him. They finally got him. It's two minutes without the freaking tiny. And now Q. He's ghost scepter. Looking for the ice path. Faith is chasing him out. Look at all these buybacks. Everybody's alive. They're finally doing it. Oh my god. LGD. Yao mm. goes down to the Slark. AA goes down to the Jakiro. Slark is the only hope. See, he's the only one left. They're going oh, for the tier fours. They're going to finish it. This game going He's going for it. Maybe you can die the ice path helping out with Ghost Scepter as well. Uh, Silas Silas too big. There. He's got the MKB. He can go in on finish off Slark immediately. Oh, there. Pop. Yeah. Goes the Weasel and the Ancient is dropping. Final life of Slark. No essence shift, but Siler is hex. Oh. Hex trying to beat away at this. So he must have killed. He's done. He's bloodthirsty. He's like, screw this game. And uh, he'll blink away. And they're just toying with their food at this point. No buybacks. They know they won the game. All right, GG. Finally, I see that go down. It is one of the like most mobile team fights I've ever casted. Yeah, that was absolutely insane. Just impeccable play from MCD towards the talent of that second rabbit was absolutely nuts. I love to see C deck really just throw down the gauntlet there. The ice blast was really good. The tether healing ward made it so they didn't even have to defensively relocate so they could save it for buyback plays. But in the end,